Joshua Peterson here with Peterson Electric. I want to show you um, a machine that we actually got to wire up here. Um, it's called a converter article 455. The date of this video for YouTube would be um, May 23rd, 2017. The code has been adopted, the new 2017 code. Anyways, um, we upgraded this system. I want to first introduce you to Paul and then I'll explain to you what I did. This is Paul, the homeowner. Hey YouTubers. Mm -hmm. And uh, he's going to explain what's going on. So we purchased a used CNC machine, a very high quality Japanese citizen machine. Uh, and we wanted to get it fired up in the garage. And we just, we basically reached out to Josh. Josh was more than willing to come and tackle the big project, kind of outside his regular realm. And we, it, it's it's been a lot of planning and it's been a lot of, a lot of dedicated work, and we we are the happy owners of an operating CNC. So we give you a rundown of what we got here and show you the sequence. So this is the print that we had to get drawn up. Uh, the city of Wellington, which is in northern Colorado, demanded this, and that's fine. We have an engineer we work with. We've worked with him for about 12 years now, and it was a simple drawing of what to do. Bottom line, when I got here, they had a 100 amp panel in here, 125 amp. Uh, we needed 90 amps to feed this. Um, don't mind the drywall, there's a little bit of hacking we had to do. We're gonna, he'll get all that mudded in time. But this panel had to be changed out to a 200 amp service out here, back to back. Um, we went ahead and put on um, an all in one. It's got its meter, main 200 amp disconnect breaker spots in the future if he decides to put a large compressor out here you have plenty of amps out here to do that slip sleeve grounding everything of course like you've seen most of my videos um, what was out here was just a meter so now he has all that out here and then as we come in here we were feeding this um, with uh, some number twos that came in uh, copper and then um, we fed this coming through this design is coming in here to the uh, the rotor converter. This is uh, not a variable speed. It is a fixed speed rotor converter. So you're going to look in that in the article. There's two different types. Um, that is fed with a six gauge. Then it comes through and up. Comes in here to a disconnect. I decided to put in a three phase disconnect uh, for purposes of just killing it quicker as well as fusing it to protect this equipment in here. Uh, the capacitors are what is also deriving the extra leg. Um, interesting enough, this is a lot like a Delta system. It requires no grounding, A, B, and C. On the C leg that we've created, we actually have 220 volt to ground. From here, we have a 124 and a 125, or 120 and a 125. So they're not exact voltages, but this guy right here is a 220. The machine does not care because what it's looking for is a constant 250, which we are right at 252, okay? So power comes in and through. We went ahead and did all our grounding, of course, and then it comes into here now driving our third leg, three phase to this panel, 60 amp main breaker size, have a retaining clip. Once that comes in, then we feed power through to the bus bar and then into here. This requires a coil motor or a, a filter motor at the top. It's a three pole, it runs three amps, which we just wired it with a 12 gauge. Um, and then this right here being three phase is for the CNC. Um, as we came through, we just put in a nice LED light, a, another dedicated circuit here for this wall. And we also came over here and gave him some power for his, uh, machines that he's using at a single 120 volt we cannot come out of that panel there's no neutral on the three-phase side it's very specific in the manufacturer's instructions by north america that you cannot bring a neutral to it you just only deal with the hot side ungrounded conductors so over here um, is our start stop station phase is simply securing this to the floor conduits came through and over just crafted that to work as it did strut to the floor, three each, slam and bolt, um, and then to the CNC disconnect. So I'm gonna go ahead and fire this up. The steps on firing it, there is a start stop button down here. I'm just gonna go ahead and cheat and do it like this. Oh, sorry. First, 
main 90 amp breaker. Second, they do not want you to bolt these down. I did use some three port rubber Ilsco lugs that are black in here, taped them up per phase color. I will put that cover on later. This will shut, lock out, power comes through. Once we get power through, we can simply Main breaker on. Now feeding my bus bar. You notice how much brighter? Probably blow up my light bulb. We've got 220 there, 120 there, 120 again, 220. Look how much brighter that is on that. This is considered a high leg, okay? But I don't have to identify it. Article 230, I believe, talking about the orange high leg because of the fact i mean i could put some orange tape if my inspector wants me to but i don't need to because there is no neutral this neutrals are dead in this panel these are my grounding for my cabinet okay so now we fired that up we'll go ahead and hit this we'll go ahead and hit our motor up here the phase rotation was wrong when i first did it so i came over here real simply i swapped black and blue my phase rotation is correct now going in a clock rotation if I'm looking down. Okay, hit my CNC here, turn that on. And now I give you back to Paul to sh me show you what's going on. Just a few sequins make breaker switch and you flip that up. You hit your power button and you give it a few minutes just to kind of warm up, get this get the hydraulics and pneumatics powered up. There we are. We are on, we are live. We get to uh, now we get to play. So, Any, anyways guys, thanks for joining us. I hope that helps you out. Um, our second CNC machine we've done. Uh, we did a very, very large one, very expensive one years ago is for aircraft machinery that they sucked down onto um, uh, basically a tabletop with the vacuum. It had a Trevini pump at 80 horsepower and it had a three phase um, isolated uh, transformer. Uh, so it didn't even have a, a leg to ground it. So it was complete isolated. And then we uh, did all that back to its three-phase panel. Uh, but that was running some serious juice. I think we were into 125 amps pretty quick. This is a simple 30 amper. Um, but it's really neat in a garage. I mean, we've converted single-phase transformer to three-phase. We made sure that uh, Excel came out and did verify the transformer could handle everything. And the bottom line is that it's, it's really only 30 amps. It's like running a dryer, but three-phase, no, no, no ground. Um, a lot fancier than that, but as as they told me on the phone for that converter, um, you really don't have to worry about that extra 250%. That's what I was concerned about on my wire size. And he said, you know what, these things run so minute. In fact, real quick, let me show you on my amp meter. Let's just really see what we're drawing on that motor. Yeah, it told me three amps, so I'm running 2.28. And that's that that uh, clean motor up above 2.43. It's not going to be exact because the voltage is perfectly not exact. All right, but then let's check out the CNC. What are we truly drawing? Well, they were they were correct on the CNC not drawing a lot. Look at that, three amps, but yet I'm wiring it as if it's a 30 amper. Just doing based on the specs that I saw, and then coming through here. Let's see what the converter is truly drawing. Like he told me, he's drawing very minimal. Four point three amps, and that's on that higher leg. So let's look at the lower voltage one, which means our amperage should go up a little bit. Yeah, close to five amps. So they're right. It's very, very minute. This is a double lug system here. So it's kind of weird, it almost like Y's. It goes here to the disconnect and here to the converter and get back up and through these capacitors. And 
and then you have to turn it off in sequence. And that's it guys. Uh, hopefully you could hear that video. I tried to be as loud as I could, but um, sorry the video was long. But again, Paul, great uh, customer to work with, very patient. I told him when we talked months ago that this would take a process. It took us six, seven, eight weeks to deal with the engineer print, three weeks to deal with the city to get them to prove it, then getting the prints and paying for it, because then it had to go to another system where the electrical uh, engineers, if you will, of the city looked at it, and then back to Wellington, and then back over to us, and then we could finally get Excel lined up, and then Excel had its window to get the disconnect, reconnect, to change the power, and then once that happened, you know, we were dealing a little bit with timing for them and us. And then once we got all that in, we finally got all this up and running. Um, but yeah, it's it's not a quick process. If you guys are watching this video, um, you, you gotta, you know, definitely it's gonna take some time. Hopefully, you know, if our schedule is lighter, then yeah, we can get it done quicker. But in the bottom line, it was, it was, um, it took some time. Anyways, thanks for joining us and we'll talk to you soon.